Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of All Bridges Burning, The Red Revolt and White Guard in Finland, 1917 to 1918. It's from GT Games and designer VPJ Arponen. It is part of the coin series, and it is the 10th game in the coin series, and that's pretty darn cool. So let's crack it open, see what comes inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. So obviously this is set during the World War One era, um, or just right before. Um, the one thing I know about it is I believe it's a three-sided coin game and it uses the new card-driven bot system instead of instead of the flow chart so I'm interested to see how that works I believe they've got that in a few of the other coin games now and maybe even adding it to others would be awesome so well, let us peek inside here all right so right off the bat we've got an envelope it says second printing and I'm thinking that means this is an errata package. I had not heard that this one had errata when it was first released, but that is going to be my guess. I'm going to set this aside and we'll get that in a bit. All right, so as usual, we start with our rule book. Fortunately, this is back before they've switched. The uh, GMT has switched over to the more of a glossy format, which is a lot harder to read, but this is still a good solid uh, matte finish so here's your rules of play it's a 32 page uh, rules of play in full color nice non-reflective paper and let's see what we got here okay, there are three three players reds senate and moderates you do end up with a counter looks like a counter reference sheet which is always nice to have so you don't have to go to a board game gulag and download one from somebody. They give it to you right here. These are the counters you should have. It looks like there's a lot of, you know, open space. So they only used what they needed. So it's not a very counter dense game. Uh, it looks like most of the game is, is going to be there. It does have an index at the back, which does have a rules index, which is nice. If you look up the, in the index, you can find what you need. So then we have the playbook. All right, this is a little bit bigger, about 40 pages, and this is kind of nice. It's got a guide to pronunciation. So if you want to pronounce uh, uh, everything correctly, you will follow the guide to pronunciation. Uh, they do not have the game designer's name on here, so hopefully I got that right. Arpunin. So this has historical background. It's also full color, and then examples of play. And GMT always does, you know, great with the playbooks and the uh, normally with the rule books but you know including the playbook you know, me to understand things a little more with more detailed examples so and so forth it's really awesome so here's the non-player example of play so we're using the bots or the solo system so as we foresaw we have one sheet of counters most of which are blank or many of which are blank so those are them right there and this particular copy seems to be in pretty good shape. Very well centered. And then we've got our faction cards. We've got for the reds. Oh, well, let's see. I guess the faction card opens up. So we have three copies of this faction card. We'll open one. We've got a page with the reds and their various actions that they can take. The senate, the moderates. And then the German action. So the German is a non-player faction, I believe. So they will do what they have to do as well. So you get three of those, and then and those are the those are six-page folded. Uh, no, four, uh, four pages. Excuse me. Just just straight up tabloid-style cardstock. And then we've got three single-sided solitaire play aids. Uh, nope, only one solitaire play aid, because you're playing solitaire, you're only the only one who needs it. So, one solitaire play aid, tells you how to do it. Here's your random space determination if you need one. Non-player event instructions. Your sequence of play. 
and the attack procedure summary cards. So that's cool. And then we have the game board and we will open that up and take a look at it shortly. And then a bag of goodies. Whoop. Three dice, you got one for each faction. I like the yellow pips on the red die. That's kind of cool. Right. So we've got obviously the player factions uh, and the German that we have now alluded to. Wooden uh, round markers. What's normally activated and unactivated. And then we've got smaller pieces in each faction color. Not the Germans. And then we've got some pawns and some cubes. in green and brown and then a dark brown cube red cubes and some gray cubes and some white cubes and some red discs so those are all the wooden markers we have and then we've got two decks of cards we've got the event deck and then the non-player so looking first at the event deck here uh, they are sorted by years so we have 1917 and 1918 so we have a 1918 deck and a 1917 deck with all the events that will happen. So, Red Revolt, pivotal event. This event becomes the next event when the Reds in the Senate on map cells combine greater than or equal to 27 and or its second propaganda round. So that'll make, that'll make sense when the rules are read. So you get a deck of those. And then if you play coin games, you know how those work. And then we have the 1918 deck. We've got the War with Many Names. War of Liberation, Senate free rallies in a space, and then free marches to an adjacent space, or war between brothers, moderates free rally in one space, polarization is at minus one. And there's probably going to be a polarization track, I'm guessing, on the board, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. So you have an event deck, you have two, two years, one event deck. And I have not used these yet to see how they work. I'm very curious to see how they work instead of the... Um, flowcharts. So we have the moderates have a non-player deck. These are kind of stuck together from friction. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we got the Senate as their own. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I miscounted. Let's try. And then the Reds have their own deck. One, two, three. Yeah. And there's another one there. Four, five, six. So I'm gonna guess there's a six one hidden in here somewhere. One, two, three. Come on, friction. It looks like there's five. Do it this way: 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. So there's five for the moderates, and six each for the Reds and the Senate. All right. So here's the map of uh, All Bridges Burning. Uh, opened up. It's a it's a very nice, um, small, smaller sized uh, map for a GMT game. It's six panels, so it's uh, about eight and a half by eleven panels, roughly. So it ends up being about 24, 24 by twenty two. So as you saw, there's very few counters in the game. This will be interesting to see how this one plays out. I like that it's going to take up less space on the table. I also like that for a change. I mean. Not all of them have been this way, but I like I like the board being this way because it's solo players sitting here and then you can reach everything instead of having the big maps that go way far out away from you. So anyway, that is a look at the map. And we're going to now do a quick look at the errata pack that came in the box and then do a recap of what you get in the box. Right, so we're going to take a quick look at what you get in this errata pack now that we've looked at everything else that was in the box so we will know what has potentially changed. So everything that came with the first, the pre, I guess everything that was in the box was had errata in it, and then this is the correction. So let's see what we got here. We have, first of all, we've got the player aids. That's why I say second printing. So the three uh, faction aid cards, you know, the four panel they are reprinted so you can put these in and ditch the others so you're going to get that we've got a sticker 
sheet that goes on the map uh, clarifies some uh, notes that were on the board, that were printed on the board that had to be corrected. So peel those and stick those on. And then for the non-player cards, apparently they've reprinted a few of them. So we got one of the, uh, got one for the moderates. You got three reprints for the, or four reprints for the Senate and three reprints for the reds. So uh, let's see if they're marked somehow. They are not marked that they are the second printing. So you gotta be very careful to put these in and then get rid of the others somehow. So, so you don't end up with the wrong ones unless you have some reference sheet. So that's what's in that. So if you pick up a copy of All Bridges Burning, The Red Revolt and White Garden in Finland, 1917 to 1918 by GMT Games, Coin Volume 10, you're going to get that playing board we looked at. You're going to get, well, let's not do that in the wrong way. You're going to get a bunch of wooden tokens. You're going to get the solo, uh, solo faction non-player decks. You're going to get the event decks. You're going to get that board we took a look at. You're going to get a sequence of play aid, solitaire play aid, three uh, copies of the faction aids, one sheet of counters, a playbook, a rules of playbook, and an errata pack that we took a look at. And that is everything you're going to get in all bridges burning. Oh, and three dice. Don't forget the dice. All Bridges Burning, coin number 10, GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!